Now, in terms of the PV module reliability parameters, I want to share with you some issues. Panel is exposed to the sun and to various environmental conditions. And in many, many cases, harsh environmental conditions. There is what it called rapid thermal cycling. We have a sun and all of, and all of a sudden clouds pass by. This cloud transforms a shadow on the panel. The temperature goes down momentarily, especially in seasons not in the summer and not in the winter. In autumn and spring, when we have mixed of sun and clouds, the panel is exposed to thermal cycle. Now, extreme temperatures in winter and in summer. Panel can be exposed to minus 20 degrees in the winter and plus 30 degrees in the summer. The same panel. So it's a 50 degrees Celsius of difference. It's a it, it's, it generates a reliability issue here. It's not an ambient plus minus and the panel is reliable, doesn't be, it's not exposed to extreme conditions. And we are when we are talking about extreme temperatures, we basically talk not on the environmental temperature, but on the surface temperature. When it's 30 degrees outside, the surface of the panel can go up to 55, 60, 65 degrees C. So it's from minus 20 to plus 65, in fact. So what the silicon sees in different seasons is 80 to 85, 90 degrees difference. That's extreme temperatures. That damage the reliability. Mechanical loading. Because of wind and because of snow. Snow, weight. It's not a very big problem. Wind is a much, much bigger problem in terms of mechanical loading of the panel because of the vibration. Because winds come from different directions, randomly, in different intensity, different wind speed. And especially when we have large array of panels acting as a sail, they vibrate. And that provides mechanical stresses on the panel themselves exposing the, the, that particular reliability problem. And then we have expansion cracks because of thermal. Not only that the silicon itself deteriorates and reduced its efficiency in terms of transforming the photons into electricity, but because of the thermal coefficients of the materials, the chemical materials and the metal and the glass of the panel, there will be cracks, a material, a material wrapping, material that will change its, its flatness, material discolorization, especially the white areas around the cells themselves. And the cells, instead of being dark blue, over time, their color change. Their color change, it means their chemical molecule, molecular content is changed. Reliability issue. Conductor corrosion. The conductors are exposed. They are exposed not directly to um, environmental conditions because they are behind, they are under a glass the protected glass layer on each panel, but it's not 100% hermetically sealed. So humidity and other um, materials that get into, penetrate under the glass, cause corrosion to the conductors, meaning higher resistance, meaning lower current, meaning lower power. Conductor contamination. Because all these materials that get into the panel change the purity of the metallic conductor material, it means it will resist to current. In this particular slide, I would like to share with you life cycle 
maintenance cost of various uh, components of a PV system. Let's look at this. The horizontal axis is the life cycle maintenance cost in percentage of the total of the 100. The vertical axis are the various components of the PV plant or PV system. We can easily see the inverters. So about 50% of the total cost, maintenance cost of a system, is due to inverter problems. Number one, as we previously said in previous uh, sessions, it's an electronic machine, it's an electronic device. It, it has its, a, its own MTBF, mean time between failure. Number one, because of its electronics. Number two, because of the high current and high voltage and high power that gets into it, heat is being uh, generated internally. We need to dissipate it. So inverter contributes about 50% to the life cycle maintenance cost of a complete system. And then we have site work and miscellaneous various things related to a PV system. It can be the meters, it can be... Uh, some um, uh, connectors and junction boxes, site works and miscellaneous. The communication, the way we monitor the performance of a system itself should be maintained and it uh, uh, contributes approximately 10% to it. Now, if the system is a tracking system, no matter if it's a single axis tracking or dual axis tracking, the tracking itself, the tracking mechanism, the motors, the, the, the pistons, the hydraulic uh, system, the control on the motors, the gears, mechanical, mechanical components, they need to be maintained. So they contribute approximately, again, 10%. Wiring and cables. PV plant has kilometers of cables. These, kilo, these cables expose the outside, they are exposed to environmental conditions. And there's something very interesting about, about a, a PV in a DC side cables. Over its entire length, a cable exposed to the sun is exposed in its upper side to a direct sun, but in the lower side, the bottom of the cable, it's not exposed to direct sun. That means the two halves of the insulation of the cable do not perform identically. The upper half, the one which is directly exposed to the sun, is, sees harsh environmental conditions, higher temperatures and, 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 and dirt, etc. While the bottom half is protected by the upper half. That damaged the cable. Damaging the cable means higher resistance per one meter or per kilometer. That means some maintenance cost are related to cables who, which are exposed to sun. And then the panels themselves, the modules. Modules contribute about 5%. Modules are a very reliable component. They are a very reliable component, although they are exposed for about 25, 30 years overseas, but they are manufactured in such a way that there is a vacuum between the layers and there's a protective glass on top and all is very uh, well-sealed aluminum frame around. So basically a PV uh, panel is a reliable device. But still, as we will see later, it has its own problems. We will need to replace it sometimes. There are shorts, there are arcs, there are a reduction in the, in the purity of the silicone. There are a wide range of uh, long list of problems which contributes about 5% of the maintenance cost of the system. And then the array structure. The structure itself, in case it's non-tracking. Structure of about, let's say, 1,000 square meters of a system. It's a very heavy metal structure that, that is um, produced either from iron or from aluminum. Aluminum is a soft material. In wind conditions, when the wind hit the panels acting as sails, vibrate the entire system, and having an aluminum, st aluminum structure being a soft material, 
all the connections with the screws and the nuts, they're getting loose. We need to straighten them. It's not the case in iron structure. Over there, they'll get rusted. We will need to unrust them and paint them and maintain them. So that's again contributes about 5% of the maintenance cost. But it's nothing compared to the inverters as we can clearly see. 50% of the maintenance cost goes towards the inverter. And this pie chart is a simple presentation of the maintenance cost divided to the families of the components. The modules and holdings are 67%. Maintenance cost is not because of reliability in this particular case, is the overall maintenance, cleaning, for example, and the holdings of the panels themselves. For example, the structure itself. So in terms of the amount of time and money that we invest in a passive system such as PV system, maintenance of ongoing maintenance, not failures, not maintenance because of failures, goes to the molding and then the inverter. Maintenance for the inverter. Cables and others, it's about 9% cables. Maintenance for the maintenance cost of the cables. Not only to repair them or replace a faulty cable by another cable, but to clean them to, um, to make sure that the cables are hooked, tied together, and they are shaded. And, and look at this bunch of cables running kilometers over kilometers as a package where high current and high voltage flows through them. And also the connectors that I tied, connectors have tendency to break, disconnect, Arcing, we will talk about arcing in a couple of minutes. So there are maintenance costs related to cable and others in terms of connectors, junction boxes, etc. Project management and regular maintenance of, um, uh, of the entire system as a whole in terms of meters and underground tunnels, etc. etc. 